Now in this video, I'm going to continue talking a little bit more about the advanced selection tools located inside of GIMP. In a previous video, we had talked about the rectangle selection tool and the ellipse selection tool. But now I'd like to move down the toolbox here and I'd like to talk a little bit about the free select and the scissor select. The free select, also known in other programs as the lasso tool, is a very free form type of selection tool. In my experience, a lot of students actually really don't like this tool unless they're working with a stylus and pen. It is meant to be very freeform for the selection. And when you're working with a mouse, it may not have the same feel whenever you're making selections. So for instance, using, I'm gonna activate that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and let's say I wanna try to like outline you know, this, the body of the cat here, just do a nice brief outline. So you just click, hold, drag, and you begin to draw here. So you can see here, I'm still holding in the mouse cursor, going around the edges, but you can already see there, like you see how I'm going around. Yep, and now we're kind of getting into some awkwardness. Kind of come down here, get this paw. And the one thing with both the selection and the scissor tool is once you're done, you need to go back to that original starting point to get that selection made. So, all right, great, we made our selection here, good stuff. As you can see though, it's not perfect. However, this tool is a prime opportunity though to talk a little bit more about the tool options related with all five of the selection tools I'm gonna to be talking about in these videos. So whenever we were looking at the rectangle selection tool, it was just that. It made rectangles, it selected the object, and we were able to go in and just copy and paste it into our graphic over here and made a new layer. However, I now have this freeform-esque selection and I'm saying to myself, okay, I wanna try to make some edits to the selection. However, I don't wanna go up to select and none and then say, to, you know, have to start all over again. So what are my options here? Each of your selection tools in GIMP under the tool options have a mode element to them. Now by default, there it's set to replace the current selection. So just to show you here, I could actually come in and try to replace this. However, because I already had the selection in place, I would have to go to select none. The big ones, however, that can give you a lot of extra power is number one, adding to the current selection. So to give you a for instance here, you see down here, like maybe I miss these little, uh, little pause, paw elements here. So what I can do is I can actually come in. So I'm gonna go ahead here, keeping the add to current selection active. I'm gonna go ahead first off, I'm actually gonna come down to the bottom here. Let's zoom in a little bit so that I can see the paw here. And I'm gonna use my space bar to kind of pan across here. So you see I'm missing a little bit of the paw here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click, kind of try to scoop that in here. There we go. And then once you have that extra selection made, so I treated it just like I did the previous scissor tool. I opened with a point, I ended with a point. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And you can see now I kind of added that in there as far as the selection goes. Now let's go ahead here though. Let's come over. And All right, you know, we'll clean up along the bottom here. So right in here, you see I got a little bit too much going on. That brings me to the next option here, which is subtract from the current selection. So once again, I'm gonna make that point. I'm gonna drag across here. And then I'm gonna hit the enter key and you see how I was able to clean that up. This is all fine and dandy. However, as you can see, it's pretty jagged as far as the selection goes. It really doesn't look natural. Um, as a side note, fun fact, uh, selecting hair and fur are probably the most difficult selections that we can do whenever we're working with this type of software.
So I'm going to go ahead and let's zoom back out to 100%. And I'm actually, I'm not even going to do the work with this. So we're going to say none. And let's go ahead here. I'm going to go back to the mode to add to current selection. And let's jump down into our scissors here. Okay, so replace the current selection. And also here, you can see that you've got another new addition down here called interactive boundaries, which we'll get to. The scissors is kind of more of a crowd pleaser when it comes to working with the mouse, where instead of having to click hold and kind of draw along the graphic, you just click once. And what it's going to try to do here is you make specific points along the edges here. And you can see how it kind of magnetizes itself the best it can to fit across those edges. Now again, similar to its counterpart though, you are going to find yourself having to maybe go back in and clean this up a little bit. However, if you don't have a stylus available to you, this can be a good kind of fill-in as far as having to make those selections quickly. But like its counterpart, uh, as far as the, the lasso, I come up to that opening point, and then I hit Enter, and I've made my selection. And once again here, you have these different options available to you that you can go in and add to and remove from the selection and clean that up. One other thing with all of the selection tools that you can do is there is a feather edges option. This can sometimes help I want to say mask the overall layout here. So for instance, if I say a radius of 50, and let's go ahead and do a cut here. And now we'll come in, we'll do a paste. Once again, there is that floating selection there. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer out of that. And then we're going to come back over to move and I'm just going to reposition that over here. So there you can see, now I have some different selections going on here. Now, real quickly here, the other tool I'd like to tie into this video, and I'm going to discard the changes real quick and just reopen that sleeping cat graphic. I'm not going to worry about actually going through and pulling this into the other file here. The fuzzy selection tool also in some of the other software packages called the magic wand, samples colors and makes its best guess on the selection. So a couple of things here, I actually need to go into the tool options first. More specifically, you want to take a look at the threshold here. So right now my threshold is 15 for the minimum number of different colors. So if I just click, you can kind of see what it's doing for me there. You're getting these weird kind of little pieces there. But now, let me go ahead and turn that off. Let's crank the threshold a little bit. Like maybe I'll take this up to, let's say, uh, about 150. You see the difference now. It just sampled all of the colors in my graphic. So maybe we want to go a little bit lower, maybe into 64. Okay, so that's a little bit, you know, more unique there. Is there a right magical number that you want to be working with? Let's go down into 30. Okay, so that's a little bit unique there. There isn't like an end-all be-all color or selection number as far as the threshold goes. It really depends on the graphic that you're working with. However, what I like about the magic wand or the fuzzy edge selection tool is the artistic elements that I can add into it. So to give you a for instance here, I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer here. And I'm going to call this selection demo. So I have these selections in place. And the previous selection tools we talked about and looked at how you can use them to cut elements and put them into a new project. But what if you want to use them as, say, a barrier instead? So let's say, for instance, I go ahead and I'm going to change over to more of like 
kind of a bright orangish here. And I'm going to grab my brush tool. So we're going to go with kind of the super kind of soft color here. And you can already see as far as the feathering effect. You see that even though I'm coloring outside of the edges here, I'm able to go in and it's blocking me. So I'm getting this really neat effect here as far as the coloring goes. So now I can come in and I can say, you know, maybe for this specific layer, now we take down, you know, maybe we take down the opacity a little bit. And then maybe we even come in, we add in, you know, maybe a light creamish color here, kind of down here a little bit. So I'll come through and kind of just add some extra strokes through here, kind of give it a tie dye look. So now when I actually turn this off here, as far as the selection goes, so if I go back, do a control shift A, I want to draw your attention here to the detail, you know, how it's really blended well into the overall piece here. You know, that it looks like you kind of did that for the photograph. So while I normally don't use the fuzzy edge selection tool a lot for actual selections, I use it for more of an artistic standpoint to kind of make unique selections. And it is kind of this just feeling that you're working with to design and create, you know, a little bit more of an intense type of photograph here. And really, those are your big selection tools here. These selection tools will help you get a lot done. As you go into more advanced content, this starts to work with your different alpha channels. This also starts to work with masks, and you can do even more along the edges of those as well.